Call of Duty Vanguard's graphics look worse than Halo Infinite. Splitgate developers take a jab at Halo's lack of Forge. Halo 5 on PC rumors get shot down by 343. A massive MCC blog update which details the future of MCC. And a Halo Infinite flight coming out this week, but there are some issues with it as well. But if you want to know more, we'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Halo, the Halo news show that keeps you updated with everything happened in the previous week. Because I know not everyone can catch up with all the news that happens as soon as it comes out. So this video is your weekly one-stop shop to catch up with everything that happened in the previous week. And let me tell you, there was a lot of juicy news that came out last week about Halo. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos and want to see some more videos like this, make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this and it really does have out the YouTube algorithm to help us get a more favorable position. And if you want to stay up to date with the Halo news, as soon as it happens well make sure you subscribe to the channel here guys let's get right into the content so let's talk about the first story call of duty's graphics actually look worse than halo infinite on twitter here showcasing some recent stuff that's been going on as there was kind of a public beta test that was going on for the new call of duty game coming out this year and there was one of these obvious graphical glitches that's been kind of plaguing the modern warfare engine for quite some time and it was happening again and people talking about <laughs> Halo Infinite demo looked way better and less buggy than this changed my mind. And also one person actually replied back with some screenshots, which I thought was rather interesting of some of the comparisons of graphics and textures that you can have within the world between Call of Duty and Halo. Most of these obviously are engine differences and art style differences, but the biggest one I think you want to point out is this rock formation right here on the left side compared to like this muddy kind of rock formation here on Halo Infinite huge difference here where this the call of duty one looks super flat and dull where the halo infinite one looks nice defined lighting hits it just right where make it look like there's kind of a wet kind of texturing to it where in call of duty it's just flat rocks and it's just kind of funny to hear because the modern warfare engine when first brought for modern warfare 2019 was widely agreed upon that the graphics were pretty dang good for a call of duty game especially they really bumped up the graphics but it seems like halo infinite has another thing above Call of Duty this year, and that is the graphics. The next story here is Splitgate takes a little bit of a jab at Halo Infinite and 343. KFC Gaming, yes, that is a real Twitter. This is an actual thing from KFC right here. Saying, trigger an entire gaming fan base with one sentence. Splitgate makes a statement saying, Splitgate will have Forge mode before Halo Infinite. Sorry in advance, Halo fans. We love you, but we had to. Now keep in mind that Splitgate is actually very heavily influenced by Halo. A lot of the developers are used to play Halo. There's actually a developer that I know personally who worked at 343 that now works on Splitgate as well. So they're certainly Halo fans. It's a little bit of a jab and just like, yeah, it kind of sucks that we're not going to have Forge at launch. It's going to be at least six months. A post from a supposed anonymous 343 employee says that it would actually be lucky if Forge releases within the first year of Halo Infinite, but that's because it's going to be so much bigger and grander than anything we've had before that it would be very surprising if they can get it done within the first six months of the game being out. Of course, that's just like leaks and rumors, but it did seem to be kind of legitimate. But that's the nature of kind of dealing with leaked information that's kind of on like, bro, trust me kind of status. That's kind of the nature. It's up to you to interpret how you feel about those leaks. And I'm really just here kind of like letting you know like what people are talking about within the community of Halo. An interesting tweet here from 1343 developer talking about in response from a lot of the PS4 reveals that happened in the previous week and there were really more just CGI trailers, nothing really gameplay related. And stated here saying, I wonder how many people realize early, often CG game announcements are sometimes more about recruiting people to work on the game than promoting the game itself. Which coming from a 343 developer, I don't think it looks that great, especially with Halo Infinite being delayed. That's not really like a great thing to say, but it totally does make sense. And I think it's more just kind of shedding light on the nature of like these announcement trailers where they're more just kind of like promotional tools to get people excited about the product and see if anyone wants to hop over and help work on it. Because if you guys take a look at the announcement trailer that we had in 2018, way back then for Halo Infinite, that there actually were some rather significant visual art style changes that happened from that announcement to what we're seeing right now. Like take a look at the Forerunner pillars, for example, in the trailer look much more like Halo 4 kind of style, but now what we're seeing is much more like true to the Halo Infinite thing of being kind of like classic modern kind of look. But I think kind of 
reveal the curtain of the uh, trailer right there to kind of be like, hey, yeah, this was more just kind of a promotional tool, not exactly showcasing what the game is going to be like, but just kind of gave me the sense and feel of what we're trying to accomplish with the game, which, I mean, it does seem pretty standard for most game developments to just kind of like have like a CGI trailer for announcement stuff to get people excited. And then maybe like the following year, you actually release some gameplay. Though advertising for games have just changed so much within the last few years, like Fallout 4 completely changed the game in my opinion when it comes to getting people excited for a game where they announced the game the year like a few months before even it was actually going to be being released so something like that happened I mean, also same thing with apex legends it was announced the day it was released and it's still very popular battle royale to this day so instead of maybe having these multiple year out announcements it was just kind of hold back and announcing your projects and maybe just kind of wait to like a year or two before you know the game is going to release to actually talk about it but i think in halo's case it was kind of necessary as it was just three years just between that span alone and we had an announcement trailer from the previous Halo game to the Halo Infinite's announcement, so I kind of see why they had to have put something out there. Hoonigans released a video of them starting the creation of making their own Warhog, which apparently was actually featured within the movie Free Guy. If you guys haven't seen that, you got a few good Halo references within that movie as well. And the first video that they posted up on their YouTube channel kind of goes over how they reviewed over like the Warthog and tried to see if they can create like a live action version of it, which was pretty cool. And they showcased the process of how they made this Warthog. Again, this is a multiple part series, so they didn't show the entire thing. I guarantee you once the full thing goes up, I'll let you guys know on this channel. But it was kind of a cool, insightful thing of how you actually make a Warthog in real life. And it does have the four wheel steering, just like the original Warthog as well. So if you car nuts out there, I'm sure you guys will enjoy this content. There was a Halo 5. Five league involving GeForce Now, which is kind of GeForce's version of like a live streaming game service kind of thing, where you can stream games to your own personal devices, which is a really cool feature that allowed people to do that. And there was a really big leak that just recently happened. On the Reddit page, Gaming Leaks and Rumors posted a big list of a lot of games that were almost confirmed to be like in the backlog kind of thing that they are going to be coming to the platform. And there's gonna be some PlayStation exclusive games can be able to be able to be played on PC as well. The big one being God of War coming to Steam. If that's the case, I might actually get a chance to play God of War, which would be sweet. And within this big leak of games coming out, guys, Halo 5 on PC, specifically for Steam, was mentioned as well on here, which got a lot of people excited because a lot of people have been wanting to play Halo 5 on PC, or at least part of the Master Chief collection, but it just hasn't come around. 343 did previously talk about this in a blog update saying back when Halo 4 is being added to the MCC saying that this is the last Halo title we currently have planned for the collection. Sorry to crush your Halo 5 and MCC dreams, which kind of makes sense because Halo 5 systems are so different from anything or traditional Halo games that it'd be pretty tough to fit it in properly and it would take a lot of work and a lot of effort with honestly minimal payout because once Halo Infinite releases, no one's going to be really playing MCC. But thankfully, Community Director Sketch came out and put it all to rest saying maybe this was Halo 5 Forge, which currently is free on PC right now if you guys want to deal with that but i can confirm there are no plans to bring halo 5 to pc we know there's some demand for it but as we stated before not in the cards as the studio is fully focused on halo infinite and mcc we will never say never but nothing underway currently which ultimately like kind of does bum me out a little bit because you know, maybe i'll well, hop off and pop on and play halo 5 i mean i only play on pc my xbox is currently like in my closet unplugged because i only use it to play MCC and Halo 5 and well MCC is on PC now and I've played a ton of Halo 5 and I'm kind of over the game at this point so you know I wish I'd be able to be able to come to PC maybe sometime in the future they hire some out some other kind of developing team I doubt that as Halo Infinite it's pretty much gonna be like the only thing we're gonna be playing once December rolls around here guys so I think that's all we're gonna have it's just it's a rumor but I think this leak might be kind of yeah, like I said maybe the Halo 5 Forge might be able to be opened through Steam or something like that that's coming up but like that might be something more on the Microsoft's end of things to kind of make that work and 343 might necessarily be like up to date with that kind of stuff the next bit of news that we have for you guys is a big MCC development update just talked about a lot about season eight and the future of MCC going into Halo Infinite as well. So I wanted to talk about this blog for you guys right here, give you the TLDR. I do have a video on my channel that details everything about this blog. If you want to know everything that's going on with the MCC, and this one I'm going to give you the TLDR of it all. The biggest takeaways from this blog are in these two paragraphs. I'm going to summarize it here for you guys. Saying that season eight release later this fall will be our last official MCC update this calendar year. This has confused a lot of people thinking that it's going to be just this calendar year is the last time we're going to get a seasonal update. Like, no, this is going to be the last season 
of MCC is Season 8. They did say to go up to 10, but as things with MCC and 343 that subject to change and it's ready when it's ready, well, subject to change would be the amount of seasons we're going to get because it's been conflicting with the Halo Infinite release schedule as well for the flights. And so I understand just kind of like not doing the seasonal releases anymore, but they go on continuing on saying that we're still going to get some support and updates for MCC, saying we have more MCC work to do and support will continue. And here they provide their reasoning why they won't be doing any more seasons saying as a studio it is not ideal to run and continue shipping seasonal updates for two different multiplayer titles concurrently so while we very much have more updates coming including more content which is huge fixes and features the manner in which they are delivered is expected to shift starting next year we are targeting pivoting away from our current seasonal model and cadence to instead focus on smaller mcc updates that can land when they are ready based on development status and studio roadmap alignment making sure that it doesn't conflict with halo infinite one feature that we had in the season 8 flight that's not going to be making it into season 8 is going to be the new post-match poses for halo 3 they said it, apparently it needs a little more polish which from what i saw i would agree with like actively in development right now for the MCC, we have additional mod support, especially for Halo 2 and Halo 3, Reach and Halo 4, and H2A. They mentioned as well in this blog update are currently in development. Steam Workshop updates. We have view model adjustments coming for Season 8, Steam account linking, file share, custom game browser with the addition of CE and Halo 3 for Season 8 as well, with additional filtering options for that custom game browser. New content as I did a make up my own video showcasing all the new customization and new armor sets that are coming in. So check out if you want to see all those. Additional accessibility support coming in as well and then you have a whole bunch of quality of life improvements coming here as well like improved lighting for halo 2 to make it match it more the original stuff which is the kind of same thing we have for ce for season 7 looks like we're gonna get the same thing for season 8 for halo 2. this next section we're talking about the hcs news the competitive side of halo and what's been going on there we had a very prominent halo content creator join one of these partnered teams a really well-known Halo Pro joins a partner team, as well as the 10 through 5 rankings of the top 25 players, which also, of course, has caused some controversy. So to start off the HCS news, guys, we're talking about one of the most prominent pros out there, Spartan, aka Tyler Ganza, has joined the team of E United. This is one of the HCS partner teams, so they get a little bit of special promotional kind of deals and stuff like that. So you will be seeing some in-game content with this team as well. So it's very important to know who's going to be on part of these teams because you're going to be seeing the stuff in game. Even release like kind of a Q&A, AMA kind of video talking about it as well, which is super cool. But it looks like he might have jumped the gun a little bit because even his or org said bro come on leaks man and then tyler with the uh embarrassed face emojis right there we also had a big announcement which i think is gonna be the start of a new trend that's gonna be coming out here in the next few months is content creators journeying up with these partner teams as well and the newest one or at least i should say the first one is ubernick joining up with space station gaming they even released this promotional video kind of showcasing the announcement of ubernick joining up with them now Nick did say that this is not going to affect his content in any way, but I think it's just going to allow him to get access to maybe some more resources to help improve his content in some capacity. And it sounds like as long as he just kind of there promoting the brand, then I think it's going to be a nice partnership. Now, maybe talking about this by itself, maybe not too much of a story, but I think what you're going to start seeing is some of these grassroots members, as well as prominent members within the community, joining up with these orgs and to help promote the esports side of things of Halo Infinite. I mean, we saw this during Halo 5 with like straight rip been sponsoring a lot of content creators so i'm expecting to see a lot of very similar things as well coming here very soon if anything comes up i guarantee i'll let you guys know on this channel and this week hcs actually finished off their first of the 10 through 5 rankings of the top 25 players of all time for halo but the interesting thing about this one is that this week each player had their own individual showcase with a corresponding video on the youtube channel for hcs and it was really well done edits i mean like top tier edits if you guys haven't seen these definitely go check them out if you're a fan of any one of these players definitely go over and check it out it's actually a really fun watch they're really short and simple and to the point it's just kind of a nice little celebration of each player but of course there wouldn't be with any controversy with Walshy, one of the greatest players of all time being number eight and snipe down not making the top five which 
Definitely caused some controversy on the choices of this whole list has just been every day It's been some new type of drama of like oh my god this player is not ranked this way But I think it's like once you reach like top 10 or especially even close to top 5 It's kind of up to more to like subjective if really anything So it's just nice to see that these players get some recognition and also just build out the hype for HCS As we ramp up to Halo Infinite because we're going to get a big announcement for the first event here Coming around pretty soon so keep an eye on the channel for whenever that does go live now finally Finally to the Halo Infinite news. I need to break the idea of the show a little bit because I know we've been talking about last week in Halo, but we have to talk about this week for Halo Infinite because we have the Halo Infinite PvP slash BTB like coming here on the 24th. Now, I do have the expectation that we will have another live stream, much like we did with the last technical preview, like right here, showcasing some of the cool new things that you can play around with within the flag, provide more context of what you can do, maybe provide some more information on new things that have changed, because there actually have been quite a good amount of changes from the last flight this one which we did cover on this channel as well so this technical preview live stream that i'm showing you guys here happened the day before the flight so i'm assuming we'll have something very similar happen this week as well i guarantee if anything happens on this channel i guarantee i'll let you guys know for sure and we like we had previously we also had a corresponding blog update with this to kind of give it all in writing and also provide some more information that way as well but it does look like this Halo Infinite fight is coming with a few bit of issues as well. Now I'm sure many of you guys have seen this tweet, or at least I've talked about it multiple times on this channel, saying that the GTX 900 series issues have been addressed and it seems like they will be fixed because of the big issue with the last flight that was performance, but that was a misconfiguration file change. So hopefully the next flight will have much better performance on PC. So we thought, okay, the 900 series graphics cards, which are still rather popular, or well, it's a lot of people are still using them, is gonna be fixed. Well, maybe not so much. Sketch replied here on Reddit saying, unfortunately, it sounds like some 900 series card issues are still present in this upcoming preview build. The team did indeed address the major crash problem that was present during the last technical preview, but as is often the case with game development, other issues have surfaced. I'm sorry to say that for this next tech preview, 900 series cards are not supported. I'll share more info as I can get it. The team is continuing to work on bug fixing and polish for this and other areas of the game on the road to release. Now I think something like this is probably what will be addressed within least the block update that we're going to receive for these uh, upcoming Halo Infinite updates, but also if talk about maybe within the live stream as well. Is that something pretty important to know that like if you have a 900 series GTX card, you might be having some bad performance issues with the game itself. And again, once we get that information for the next flight, guys, I guarantee I'll let you know on this channel as soon as possible. In some lighter Halo Infinite news, guys, the art book for Halo Infinite, the Deluxe Edition, is now available for pre-order for $80 on Amazon, and it will be available on December 14th. And for previews, this is all you pretty much have right here. Obviously, it's kind of a spoiler once you show things that are inside the book as well, but you can assume there's going to be various bits of concept art and very more detailed looks at some weapons, maybe some changes that might have happened along the way during development. So some cool stuff right there. Art books are always pretty fun to check a look at. Now, we did cover this on the channel in a previous video as well guys well it looks like double xp is now available for you to be earning in halo infinite as well this will help you progress through the battle pass to get your unlocks faster twice as fast because well double xp and the only way you progress through the battle pass right now is by earning xp so doubling that rate is going to help you get your unlocks a lot faster so this is actually genuinely going to help you progress in the game and get all your cool stuff and that deal is with kellogg's if you buy anything like cheese it's pringles pop tarts or bare naked granola you'll be earning some double xp points now, I actually did this myself today where I bought some granola, I saved the receipt, I uploaded. This is a very similar process that we had with the Monster Energy Drink promotion. You know, I made an account, I sent in a picture of my receipt, I got a code back. And once I got the code and input that code into Halo Waypoint, it just said 2 XP. Like, I don't know if more than just like one single token of double XP, because you can earn up to 60 hours of double XP with this promotion because each purchase is supposed to equal 30 minutes of double xp so i'm not quite sure if each individual purchase counts as 30 minutes or as each individual item counts as 30 minutes again we 
can't really test that until we get the game. If anyone can clarify in the comments, I guarantee I'll pin it up and let you guys know. And as I like to end these last week episodes, I like to kind of go into some more of the fan creation cracked Halo stories, so I call them, because I think these are stories that kind of fall between the cracks, between the normal news stories. I think are still pretty fun to share. Like a user created alternate ending to Combat Evolved. We also have Marcus Leto showcasing the edge of a Halo ring, which is a really cool perspective that we've never really had before. And this is coming from the original art director at Bungie who helped create Halo. And a recent Marvel star reveals that he's actually quite the Halo fan. Content creator and modder Chunky Bean made a really funny video and I just had to showcase this to you guys. This is the alternate ending for CE. I mean, if I completely dunked on the Covenant like Chief did in CE, I'd want to bust a move. Marcus Leto, who was the original art director at Bungie during the Halo era, and also kind of goes into a little bit of like showcasing the perspective of what it's like to be on the edge of a Halo ring. Now, could this something that we could do within Halo Infinite? I think that'd be pretty freaking amazing. He says, I don't believe there are many, if any missions that ever took place near the edge of a ring. But if so, this is the view of the Halo ring they may have from there. Also mentioned that the atmosphere is almost unbreathable at this point. Will this be something that we could see possibly within Halo Infinite? I doubt it, but maybe down the line sometime, I think it'd be really freaking cool. An interesting tidbit of news here, guys. The lead actor of the Marvel movie Shang-Chi also talks about his experience playing Halo. Simu Liu talks about it right here. First Halo came out right when I was like, around 14 years old and we literally played it all the time like me and my three friends would play i still remember so clearly hang them high pistols only three headshots in a row with a pistol could kill you and that's we, we got so good at it i mean come on i think that's pretty cool seeing that like one of the lead actors from one of the most hit, recent hits of a marvel movie is actually a pretty big halo fan so could we get like a simu liu kind of halo crossover deal come on i mean that'd be sweet to have him on for like a live stream or something come on let's make it happen so you guys are new to the channel or missed any content for me recently check out the videos right here i got a link to all my halo infinite news and informational videos i'll be uploading daily about so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one Peace out.